Antonis. Antonis. Ines. 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 Wie? Who? Antonis and Ines. Antonis uh, left to the cafe. He said it's okay. He said, Why? Okay. And Ines. Ines. They both have free time. They need ah. to <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look at that. So we got now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Ah, nice. Welcome to the developer Ask Me Anything session. Uh, we, I would like to start with every developer saying very short uh, their first name and what they did for Blender in the past year or something. Yeah. Hi, my name is Thomas Beck. Um, I've got a bit of cold, so it's a bit weird sounding now. Um, I'm doing sneak peeks. Maybe one of you seen them, developer sneak peeks. I'm helping transforming Blender into the 2.8 branch with the OpenGL transformations. And um, I did some things like uh, font browser previews and such stuff. Hi, I'm uh, Brecht van Lommel, uh, and you know, the last year I've been mostly just helping out a bit with cycles and some other areas uh, of Blender. <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. Uh, I work on OpenGL and the viewport for 2.8. Hi, I'm I. Um, I've been working on micro polygon displacement, and I'm now working on the split kernel. Hi, I'm Martijn. Um, I'm working on O6 platform maintenance, and I used to do Windows, so. <laughs> no. We have uh, Ray Molenkamp, who's awesome. And he's, he's, I mean, he supports most Blender users right now, and he's not even here. Hey, I'm Bastien, and I'm working mostly on data management and maintenance stuff. Hi, I'm Sergey. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sibren. I'm doing Blender Cloud, Blender Cloud add-on, and pipeline tooling and integration for Blender. Hello, I'm Julian. I'm doing mainly UI stuff. I've done uh, the Google Summer of Code project with the la layer manager stuff, and um, doing custom manipulators, and also a bit of viewport and all kinds of UI stuff. What? Also yeah, I'm also alcoholic, of course. We are all alcoholics, we are developers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kier. I work on motion tracking when I have time, which is not that much anymore, unfortunately. If you're interested in working on motion tracking, looking for people to mentor, so come talk to me. Hi, I'm Luca. I'm working on the class simulator. Hi, uh, yeah. Hi I'm Lucas. I'm doing uh, cycle stuff, so light portals. I've been doing denoising over the Google Summer of Code, and I have too much stuff on the cycles roadmap, which I should probably finish sometime. So, yeah. I'm Inish, and last year I have been employed full time somewhere else, so I've been doing only some small add ons, the selection sets, or helping with the Blender ID and the cloud, and that's mostly it. Hi, I'm Dalai. Last year I've been doing, I guess, two multi view and VR things, and now viewport for 2.8. Hi, I'm Joey, and I've been helping out with uh, integrating head mounted display support for the Blender viewport. Hi, I'm Monique, and I have a bad cold, but uh, I've been helping out with a compositor. My name is uh, Jeroen, uh, and I'm also a compositor developer. Good. That's it. <laughs> so the, um, uh, the purpose of this meeting is that anyone can ask anything to the developers. So who has a question you want to ask to the people here? Yeah. I will try to keep track of everyone. I have a question about the um, hair particle system. Sorry, I have a question about the hair particle system. Um, and there's this vector that you call tangent. Um, tangent is two-dimensional, not one-dimensional. It's a plane. Mm -hmm. And I've never been able to work out which of the various tangent directions it actually corresponds to. And when I sort of switch it on for a cube, say, I get random directions. All of them. All of them. <laughs> That's all of the tangents. I only want one at a time. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's the problem. 
Anyone who, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you try, you can try. But he also knows everything about yeah, it. No, I know. Nah. <laughs> Particles in 2.10 branch? Hmm. Never heard of. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't get away with that. Right. So particles will be recorded anyway, yeah. but in the, in, the, in the current design, it's, it's a bit all random, and it's not the biggest problem with the particles. So we'll work on that, but currently it's just some random thingy, which mm -hmm. is tendential to, to the surface, but the, the orientation is, is undefined by users. We, we, we set up a project to, uh, to test replacing the particle system with a node-based system, something that also could get hair, or in our simulations, and an object updating. Fantastic idea, but it's really, really big. It's a big plan to do this. So the focus now is back on, on viewport and for 2.8 to, to do things that are a little bit more feasible. But what we now have to study is, so what are we going to do with the uh, old particle system? We're going to put it back, right? Throw right. into canal. No. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think any of the users here says, ah, I don't need the particle hair system in Blender, right? Anyone says you don't need it? I don't need hair. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so if we want to have a first 2.8, alpha, whatever version, a test release, uh, it should have particles. So how are we going to handle that? Who's going to handle that? Any volunteers? <laughs> Nobody dares. Come on, guys. Joey can do it. You can do it. What? Yes. No, hair. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. I will, uh, after one year, you might say something different. But you first do a cloth. Cloth is almost as difficult as hair, you know? No. Otherwise, oh, I will discuss this with the. Uh, uh, Bastien, Sergei, and other so, so, so particle in the way how it's currently used is mainly a duplication system, and duplication system is going to be replaced by something node-based probably, mm -hmm. and it's just the tangent is just going to be like an input of of of, the, of that node tree. So, it's, but it's my hope that we can put back the old particle system. No, it'll, it'll be re-implemented. There is some hope that yeah, some files will be compatible, but uh, the 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 old system is not going to be ported as is. No. <laughs> it will be something completely new. For the most of it, it will work the same. Well, hopefully, yeah. But hopefully. <laughs> How much work would that be? N amount of hours, <laughs> where N is more than K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is still un unsolved. We have to find a way to work. OK. Anyway, so the tension problem, nobody knows, <laughs> right? We don't know the old, part, uh, the old hair system and particle system has been stabilized in a way which we don't want to fix or improve. And because we don't make a new particle system, we have to put something back in 2.8, which will be a little bit different and not work fully compatible, but at least we'll have to s at least the same quality features. So that you can do Same quality is not so difficult, actually. Oh, no? <laughs> So you get nice tangents going all directions. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah. No question. Sorry, another question about particles. No, it, it is about the um, the representations of the part. Do you hear me? Yeah, it's better. It is about the representation of the of the of the particles. Uh, uh, simplified uh, in a in 3D viewport, uh, not not the airs but the emitter particles. Uh, we there there, there was a talk about uh, point density texture, and uh, um, the it is uh, based on the radius of the particles. So, uh, will it be possible to have? A representation, a kind of outline uh, that represents the the point density texture. Is that a point about point density? Like what? What do you mean? A visualization of point density? I mean, uh, when you have a lot of particles, you can check. You have a checkbox to see the size of the particles. So you have. Uh, you have a little 
little circles around the particles. So instead of having uh, a whole bunch of circles, uh, will it be possible to just have the, the silhouette of uh, the interior particle system? Maybe. <laughs> Anyone? That would be... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, but uh, we don't have it. It's I just... That's more a viewport question, I think. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't know anything about particles. Um, so, I have a friend. <laughs> no, it's me. I'm, I'm not going to kid you around. I'll be to the point. Um, so we've tried coding an add-on, tried, and we use the background process a lot, and we probably do some things which might either surprise or probably appall you. But we keep this thing alive, a background process, and we run scripts and we talk to it, we send messages to it, and we get it to do stuff because we're trying to distribute Blender's data across to other machines and then get them to do stuff and send it back. What we don't know is how different is it running Python in background in Blender to running it in foreground, because we notice they don't always behave the same way when we do stuff. Is there any sort of like gotchas that we should be aware of when we're doing this? How different are they? I'd say mostly you have to be aware of the context and operators things, because when you are running an operator, it's using a con what we call a context, which is mostly kind of a dictionary things, which regroups what is available currently so if you are running it from a 3D view, you'll have a 3D view context with the, the, the point of view the, and all that kind of things. If you are running it from the console, you won't have that kind of information. And if you are running it from background mode, you won't have that kind of information either. So you have to be careful when you're using operators that what we tend to say that in Python script, if you can avoid using operators, it's better. You should try to directly call um, more low-level functions directly in the API or in the BMesh uh, API, maybe. And uh, if possible, avoid operators. Operators are really done to be used by end user from the UI more than from the code. It's not always possible, but it's better. Come on, guy. Come. On. Come. You are? I'm Sebas. I'm probably don't know if you know me from Manteflow. I'm the guy. Ah. Yeah. 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 Um, could you explain the uh, decision to postpone the nodal everything design idea? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, who did postpone it? Yes, so the node everything where everything is a node. Can you imagine that? Yes. Well, in my, in my understanding, if everything is a node and you don't have separate types of node trees, you could plug whatever you want into anything else, and that's kind of a fundamental design. So postponing it would... I mean, it's a big project, and it, it, it's a big, way, it's a long way for, for to, to to come for until we can start to putting the all everything to a node because we 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 need to bring the dependency graph to to a state where it's it's ready for for granular everything first, and meaning dropping out all the legacy stuff which is not compatible with the system. So even in yeah. Even in Houdini, that is really, really well designed to be a totally node-based system. They have at least two types. I don't know really well, but they have the, like the, the object level type, or seeing graphs and relationships, and they have the geometry level with uh, points and particles and hair. And they separate that. And in the visual interface, they uh, visualize it even by having horizontal uh, nodes and vertical. And the vertical ones are different types of data than the horizontal lines. So that kind of design processes we still have to go through. 
And then from a blender point of view, because in blender we have modifiers, and we have methods, we have geometry, we have physics, and we have simulation, and then you have the objects and constraints and all the other stuff. How do you handle that in a node system? So we are still working on making a design, but this is not nothing final. We need you, you guys to help uh, with getting a good design proposal. Huh? That's what you want to say, maybe. Yeah, I just wanted to say that it probably means rewriting a lot of parts of Blender, so it's a huge project in itself. You, we don't have the manpower to conduct it in parallel with the viewport project, which is already quite huge and many other things, so just have to take steps to do it. And one of the things uh, what Sergei is working on, the depth graph, and many people don't know what that thing means or what the uh, purpose is, but it's, it's really big. Huh? It's like the whole updating animation system, the data system, the scene data in Blender. Everything you generate before you start rendering or making games or making anything. All of that is controlled by a dependency system to make sure that everything gets updated in the right order and as fast as possible. And once you have that system sane, then you can do things like duplication, uh, massive stuff, or uh, having 20 characters in a very efficient way. And you want to do overrides uh, with, uh, with linking, or if you have proxy, what we call proxy now, where the override is a better one, where you can have one character file, and you link it in five times, and you tweak on the settings, and you get five different characters with local properties like color of hair and cloth or textures or that kind of things. And that's all related to what Sergei is doing. I am doing, this, I am doing 2.78A release maintenance and bug no, tracker. No, 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 you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> the stops. That, that's what I was doing for until recently, no, no, for until next yesterday. Week, no, no bug tracker next week. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, please stop, stop reporting bugs for a while, okay? <laughs> So next year. Is this a game or coffee? Ah, no, 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 no. Tea, he drinks tea. He's so sleepy. Okay, hi. Um, I'm currently learning Blender uh, Python, and um, I, uh, I'm, I'm beginning, so, uh, but I just want to use Python on Blender for the moment, so, uh, I tried the the, the documentation uh, to to begin with, but it's I feel like it's already starting with terminology that I did not really understand. And uh, personally, I really like video tutorials, so I was wondering is is there a, a good source for video tutorials or something very clear for beginners uh, to for for Python, but Blender Python. Do you already know Python itself? I, I watched like 10 video tutorials on Python just and uh, re read about uh, um, some pages on the documentation. Because I mean Blender in itself is a rather complex program and all the documentation and all the tutorials, I think, assume a basic knowledge of Python already and a kind of minimal experience with that language first. I mean, well, so so for terminology, you 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 should probably start with the, the Blender manual itself just to get uh, used to the terminology used by Blender itself because it's common for interface and for the operators. Th th that would be the starting point, and then answering like if there is a good <coughs> resource for, for for the tutorials, I would guess so. Maybe we can add some to the cloud at Blender.org. Yeah, yeah, but also we can ask him. <laughs> yeah, I, I could do some tutorials, yeah. wow, you, you but uh, it it won't happen months. in the next month, I think. So if you could wait for two or three months, then I would uh. gladly do some. Uh, is it really true that developers hate documentation, right? True? No, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 It depends. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem with them. Uh, developers don't hate documentation. I love reading documentation. They, love reading they don't them. like ah. writing them, if necessarily. <laughs> so, so what is the trick to get you guys to write more? Or what is the, what would you do? Uh, well, I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> um, uh, 
what I do have, because I've I've been busy with the Blender kits, but more the, on the educational side, and the German Python community, they have donated a course on learning Python using Blender. It's the PyMove 3D, and they've donated uh, to the P3D 101 education part. So I can give you the website, and it's a really nice tutorial where you just start learning functions and parameters and that sort of things using the Blender interface. So that might be a nice startup for you. I, it's the it's B3D101.org. 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 Ah, okay. B3D101.org. Yeah, yeah. B3D101.org. And um, I know the German Python community have been doing these courses for already three years at schools in Germany. And uh, they're very happy about it. Because, uh, Kia, I heard that in Google, the trick is that the managers have to do the documentation and then the coders can do the code. Is that true? That's not true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a brilliant idea, right? So the high, high paid people have to do the documentation and so then the. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but I am doing, I'm writing shitloads of emails, okay? But, uh. <laughs> it's true, though. There's no rule that says that the managers have to write documentation, okay. but I end up writing a lot of documentation, and I do happen to be a manager, so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose there is some truth to that. But do you have any tips for how we can handle that in, in, in an open source uh, community? <laughs> What is the way? Is there any way of just kicking ashes a lot? And uh... I, I, it's hard to say. Uh, I think for us, we have a requirement on documentation as part of the commit process. So you can't just land your patch. It's like you have, you know, there's a checkbox for a bunch of things. Code review is one of them. Documentation review is another. Uh, that has to be done before you can actually submit it. You can also make a user committee to approve on commit. So the commit only gets in if a user can understand what it's about. What? <laughs> no. No? So that means you commit with pictures and nice diagrams and with awesome and that kind of things. No, okay. What's an idea? What's only an idea? <laughs> So often, once we get back to code and yeah. we wanted to push something, I will say, nah, nah. Where, 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 where is the documentation? Exactly. I will reject all your patches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we will go to the patch tracker, yeah, yeah. which you hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you okay. read my document, my commits, so they're always very nice. I had lots of example files all days, and I posted the docs. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. I will. All right, there was somebody there, and then you. Okay. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's why I'm. Um, why not? Why not combine two ideas? You had the ideas, I think, ten years ago, of documentation bodies. So, a documentation bodies, so that the coder doesn't have to make it nice and pretty. Just so, why not? Why not um, leverage it out to somebody else, but still, don't don't. Um, yeah. Uh, but still, don't accept the commit. Before the coming, uh, before the documentation is done. But, uh, the trick is, of course, that you guys have to do the documentation. Yeah, we have, we have got user module. Huh? Sorry? How it's called? There is a user uh, module uh, team no. member. But, uh, but, but, I mean, what but Peter said is right. I mean, we have module teams in Blender. We call that modules, uh, like. Uh, the, the sequencer, or text editing, or lots of modules in Blender. Every module has a team, and the team has two roles, it's owners, yeah, people who can make decisions, and planning, and stuff, and team members. And we would like to have every module always uh, artists and users on board, people who can feedback on the modules, and people who can uh, help the developers then also to provide them with nice demo files, or with some, uh, some text and tutorials. And a great example is, of course, what uh, happened with the motion tracker. We had Sebastian teaming up with uh, Sergei, and that was a great uh, feedback system because Sergei could do his work, and you were showing off how awesome everything was, uh, was going to be. Yeah, it was fun. But, this, but it is usually fun, especially if it's in development in an area where you feel connected to anyway. 
uh, you can help out. So go to wiki.lender.org, and uh, uh, if you could you do that, wiki.lender.org on the computer? And there is a contact developers link, and then you have all the, deve uh, the developer mailing list, and there's also a way to find the module teams with the names of pe the people who are responsible for specific parts in Blender. You were first, right? Uh, just a short suggestion regarding getting into programming with Python. So there are um, quite a few open university uh, platforms online. And for example, on edX, there's a course from MIT regarding object-oriented programming in Python. And I think doing something like this in the beginning is really helpful and makes your code much nicer. And yeah, especially if you then want to code bigger things. It's like that. OK, hello. First, I want to thank all developers. I'm, I'm a developer too, and I really love the risky that Blender developers are, you know, are go to the barriers, and like when Python goes from two to three, Blender says, oh, go on, from two to three in, in Python, and all Python community in production doesn't go to three. You know, doesn't pass from Python 2 to Python 3. And I use uh, a lot of Python and, and Blender in, in high level. I, I like to low level Python can do. And I have a question about, you try the, the latest Python, but in the Python community, there are uh, subtle uh, interpreters, you know, like Pi, Pi. You know that, that the snake who, who eats his own tail, you know? And I want to know if there are some builds with Blender with another Python than different or more fastest one, you know? Not to my knowledge. Um, <laughs> as far as I know, problem with PyPy is that it's not fully complete. It doesn't have a full support of uh, Python 3 language. I, last time I checked, at least, I don't know what it's uh, right now, but and it's always the same problem because in theory it should be the same, but there are always some implementation details that can make things hard. So I don't know. I don't think it has ever been tried so far, and it could be interesting because PyPy has very nice, yes, it has a very nice performance improvements in some points, but uh, well, again, more time to try to get it working and other things, so. <laughs> yeah, um, there, there used to be a problem with um, paint, painting modes that when you have a very dense mesh and then you zoom out, uh, so you paint the mesh and it's like only, you see only black lines for the wireframe and then uh, you zoom in again and some uh, triangles haven't been painted at all and this used to be a problem for uh, vertex yeah. painting, texture painting and weight painting and uh, for a long time actually, um, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Blender. But uh, then this problem was solved like a year ago for two of the modes. I, I can't remember which two of those three, but one of them still has it. It's like very weird. I think it's it's the same problem in, for uh, the user brain. It's the same problem, and then it's solved. And in some areas, and others, it's not. I I come here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Actually, we had a, a Google Summer of Code project on that topic this year, and um, I mean, the, the guys n pretty much finished it. I just, I am guilty because I didn't have made a real review of it yet, but it should be able to go in master pretty soon, and it's uh, it's pretty much changing the, the the way we are doing the detection of the the features we are behind the the brush to something more modern, more efficient, and. Uh, that's it. it. It's re nearly ready. I just have to find some time to review it seriously, and it can go to code. Now you shouldn't be, uh, uh, I mean, we make fun about it, but of course we want to have people to report things in the bug tracker. Yeah, of course. It's very important. Yeah. 
That's also good. Uh, so I want to encourage anyone here to, uh, to do that, but also you can help out if you have some time. It's fun to be there because you see people reporting things, and then you can take their examples and check if, if you can reproduce it, because a, a bug tracker is not about you to say, I have a problem. It is you to make sure that the developer can reproduce the issue so that he can work on it. It's not a support system, it's about a system that helps making Blender better. That's the, the whole goal. Hello, I would like to know more about libraries and what's the plan for linking because what we have in Blender already is, is very powerful and it is unique to Blender because we can reference the content of an external scene directly. But are we going to make it a bit more powerful, like for instance, having the possibility to make something happen at mesh level and then bring the mesh back into the referenced object. A bit what happens with proxy, with rigs, but being able to apply like a physical simulation to a cloth or something. It is a production need affecting in some way what's in the group because it's very useful having it all bundled into one single object, but I wonder if, it, if there is some way to affect what's inside. I think uh, both Sergey and uh, Bastian. So, so, so short answer is something is going to change here, right? But it's also the re related on, on the override concept and the dependency graph and the, the proxy, everything. So it's, it's yeah, it's so, so something is going to improve, but there is a this way to, 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 to go through first before we have some coding. We also want to have a better coding. and more abstract way to define what an asset is and what it means if you link in or use an asset in your project files so that you have overview on yeah. where is everything coming from, uh, how can I copy it or use it, and that kind of interfaces. And it's important for pipeline. Um, I would like to know if the 2.8 project, or maybe if it's connected to the viewport thing, um, like Blender currently has a problem with huge scenes. So if you have really many objects, Blender is incredibly slow. So is that on the list of 2.8 somehow, or? Uh? No. All right. <laughs> the, the, I give you, there's just a bit too problem. Yeah, but there's also the problem with when you have a lot of objects, you have, when you are adding something or deleting something, especially adding, there's currently some kind of problem in the code that goes uh, uh, checking the wall list again and again each time you have an object, and that eating quite a bit of time currently. We'll have to fix it, but yes, it's mostly viewports. Yeah, um, the viewport part of that, uh, definitely, that's one of the targets, is to make the drawing of lots and lots of objects or complex scenes better. But that's, uh, I mean, as you know, that's only a small part of it, the loading, the, the basically object management behind the scenes. Um, I, I'm not sure how that's going to be fixed. Who, who would work on that? So currently there are no plans to, to, to improve anything in, in their regard in, in because, because both, most bottleneck here is the dependency graph and, and the update of all the references with something has changed and there is no currently pl plans to, to, to do some dramatic optimizations here because we have more, more, more serious design issues to be solved first. But, so we just leave, leave it for later to, to probably look into. But just, just, just don't use so, so much objects like. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> The whole, the whole idea of an object is that you have a unit in the interface which you can select and move around and create relationships with and put constraints on and animation systems. So you have to make that unit useful. And if you say, yeah, well, I want to have 10 million objects in my interface, then you, you are abusing the concept because why would you? You, you could also say, I can have 10,000 particles and I'll use a duplication system to manage it. Uh, the groups are already much faster than uh, if they are loose. But how many objects are you talking about? A supermarket. And then there's like a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you have, you have all, the, all the things. Like, uh, you have the shelves and stuff. But, but it's all duplication systems. 
Instead of using single objects for every uh, package, you can make one package and duplicate it. Okay, know, okay, okay. This, the, 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 no, wait, 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 I, I can answer this. So, so you just use the, the, the new node-based duplicating system with overrides, and then you don't need to, to have real objects in the scene. So, of course. Of course, Ignore it, we'll be fine. Actually, the problem with many objects in Blender is really interesting. Like, um, currently, I'm doing some work for a company that has a CAD software, and they're using cycles to render. And like, uh, in the software, they uh, they can have a um, like an, a board with lots of stuff on it, and it's super fluent. It goes to cycles, uh, perfect rendering, super fast. Then we export it to Blender. And uh, Blender, we, we can't even use Blender at all because like with 3,000 objects in the viewport, it slows down to a crawl and uh, the interface is not even responsive anymore. Then I select all the objects, I join them. We have this exact same number of polygons, but it's super smooth. So this is a really annoying because I don't think that 3,000 objects in the viewport is a lot, I guess, if uh, um. it's a studio will render a scene with you might want to switch to the static BVH in the performance settings. That should help a lot. Uh, no, it's not about cycles. It's about the Blender viewport. Oh, okay. Cycles can handle thousands of objects. With I ease, think it's, it's isn't it like a mixture of dependency graph and viewport and all that kind of stuff, all the bottlenecks? Well, it's a part of viewport and it was already answered. So can we move on, please? <laughs> There's, but there's definitely stuff going on, especially in the viewport, and I guess there, there come a huge viewport speed up, and also like switching to BVH selection, which is going to make selection faster and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, of course, the de dependency graph is still an issue, but uh, I think we are definitely improving things there. Well, um, mm -hmm. are there any plans for caching frames in the compositor? So you can maybe composite one frame and then press play and have like a quick play blast, blast sorry. Well, um, there are some ideas about it, but uh, first, uh, the first idea is that the compositor should be real-time. So uh, that you don't need to uh, buffer anything except if you really like it. And then we can perhaps use the movie tracker to uh, cache the, the frames or we have the Blender player who can cache uh, the, the the frames for the play part. Uh, well, it's your, your sample-based compositor is that also based on getting that real-time feeling back? What? I'm your, sorry. Your new you said you're working on a sample-based compositor. Is that also uh, to solve a lot of real-time issues? <laughs> or it will be uh, <coughs> full real real-time. Yeah. So. So the the thing is, uh, people in uh, many uh, pipelines are used to have uh, render people to save out 5,000 files, and then go to the compositing department, and they have to read in everything, and then you want to make a, uh, a render out of it, uh, after effects or whatever. You wait two hours, and then you have to first render up the whole composite. And more advanced software then is allowed to cache things and it's all in memory. You, you buy an expensive computer with uh, 32 gigabytes of memory and then you can preview everything. You mean probably that, right? Yeah. You can <coughs> obviously, you can easily do an export and you'll get an idea from just you know clicking play rendered an animation. I'm just thinking of, um, you know, it might be easier to just see it play back in the viewport window rather than render, then play the animation. It's, it's a really small thing, but I thought it'd be quite nice. Yeah, there, there are ideas about it to, to have the compositor really in, inside the 3D view, but it is really still uh, an, an idea. But then you can also do it based on OpenGL renders, but uh, still yeah. need to look into that. But you can look at what the, the movie clip editor does. But it's very transparent, it's under the uh, uh, hood, right? But if you start working on it, it automatically tries to make a cache so that you can play back a few things very fast. And you don't have to set it purposely on or off, but while you're working on previewing, and suddenly things start becoming smooth. So that would be a, a way to look at it. Um. Could somebody delete the 2.48 or 2.49 Python API documentation from the internet? <laughs> Please? Delete no. Where? Every, every time 
time I search for Python API information, I always end up first reading through like two pages of stuff from 2.49 or so. Well, and go tell Google. Ah, on uh, Google? Oh, yeah. Prove it. <laughs> um, I know that Francesco is working on a different way to render the manual and maybe also uh, API documentation so that we have a nice version drop down in some corner somewhere. So you can just switch between your versions. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. More people here. Francesco walks out. Have we got render questions? <laughs> um, cycles. Ah. So uh, I think I've mentioned this problem um, at a conference before. Um, if I have an architecture visualization where only the camera is moving, um, Lucas, I've been talking to you about this uh, in Stuttgart, by the way. So uh, if I have a model and just the camera is moving, and I want a real quick render, but the model is pretty big. Then I spend like a minute on building the BVH and two seconds in rendering. And the static BVH button does nothing to me. Um. But in the viewport, if I press Alt A, it works perfectly. And if I, if I want to just have a few images out, uh, yeah, there is a reason for that. I mean, there is this dynamic and static BVH, and what that does is dynamic BVH means that you have two levels. First, for every mesh, it builds its own BVH, and then it builds a top-level BVH with all the mesh instances. And the static just does everything in one. So that means that if you have like 100 instances of one object, you have only one BVH in the dynamic one, but you have 100 times the um, faces in the static one. And the reason why the option doesn't do anything for you is the option is only for the viewport, and with F12 rendering, it's always doing static BVH. So in your case, it would be better if you could select dynamic BVH for F12 rendering. That's a corner case, so it's not supported currently. It could, it could easily be added. It's like a five-minute patch. So, 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 so I understand that it, it, it currently it's more like hooking up more, more data to the persistent data option, which for currently only support images. We can add BVH in there as well. Uh, that, 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 that would solve the, the performance issue, if I get it correct. Whether it's static or dynamic B, B, BVH for, for the final render, it shouldn't matter that much if, if, if your scene doesn't change and only camera is moving. So he's really caching the BVH to the hard drive, and it's loading from hard drive instantly. Or we 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 removed that option because it was overflowing everyone's hard disks in one day. Oh, oh we had that. Oh, okay, now I yes. got it. All right. So we just needed to 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 bring it back in in, in as in memory cache. Also, at uh, the BVH. All right. So one question. Um, just sorry. Okay, uh, just one point, the BVH caching, it used to work, but with 278 we now have adaptive micro-displacement, which means that the BVH actually depends on the, scene po on the camera position because of the adaptiveness, which kind of makes this whole thing tricky again. All right. Uh, because in viewport it's not retessellating. You can actually check that if you put the camera like close to the object in one point you go uh, you go con uh, shift Z, and then you move the camera, the adaptiveness doesn't update, but it should update for F12. Quick question. Uh, is Blender ready for rendering production quality animations? Is there any drawbacks which one needs to be worried about? Uh, do we need to go to some other rendering engine like Cinema 4D or something? Right. Well, we render Cosmos Blender mod internally in Blender and Cycles, and it's kind of production quality, I would guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there any limitation? Like, if we do a full fledged film rendering, say we are doing in Amazon Web Services, and say, say two hours film, and it takes a lot of time and processing, and then at the end we find out that a lot of things went wrong, or went wrong. So what do we do about it? Like, is there any problem, or it's perfectly fine, and we'll be OK? Uh, full, once, a, full, once full animation is done, everything is done, scene is set up, and, they, and then we want to do a full rendering of the film. Yeah, so it takes a lot of time for rendering. Yeah, so we'll be using Amazon Web Services. So once we. So we are making a feature film. We want to use Blender 
Uh, we want to know, is it okay? Is it production ready? And is there any problem, so, which we need to be careful about? No? <laughs> well, what are you using currently? What are you using before? Okay, but, but you have people in your company who used 3D software before. No, no, no. Are they all, all I'm new? I'm a ah, okay, so it's all new. But then, yeah, of course, but you, you, then that's, yeah, uh, you always have problems if you start using any 3D software. You know, I, I wouldn't recommend you to make a film with uh, Cinema 4D or with Maya or with uh, 3D Max. It's totally unusable, unusable right? <laughs> but some people manage to use it. So Blender has the same problems. It's very problematic and there are bugs and there are always issues. But if you have people who manage to uh, get over that, then you can un understand how the software works. You can get really far with it. And you've seen last night the film festival or on Friday evening. Yeah, so it's fantastic. Yeah, it's all high quality production level uh, of uh, work. So if you have the right people, you can do it. Yeah. Is there anything which one needs to be very careful about? Uh, you know, uh, once you put money in, Get good, get good people on board. That's the only thing. Get good people. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. Well, it's a development, I think. Uh, hi. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, will there be uh, a version 2.79? Yeah, this topic is forbidden for until January two seven, two, okay. 2017. So second question. Uh, when the, <laughs> uh, when uh, the 2.8 version is out, Will the um, previous branch wi be supported or will be left to rot? No, I th I, we will just merge 2.8 branch over the master and, and, and keep, uh, keep moving from the, 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 that point. It's okay, similar so any to problems it's we, within uh, 2.7 will be left without fixing? Well, yeah, I mean, th we have always done it that way. Even when we release uh, 2.78, we stop supporting 2.77 and that's the way we we just already supporting the last release was already a, a huge burden. We can't just support more releases. Oh, sure. Remember two four nine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So just uh, to ask, don't, don't are there people who use VR in Blender? Wow. Okay. Well, so it's always the same guy who uses <laughs> that stuff. Okay, we want to uh, yeah. uh, I'm currently implementing a new UV unwrapping algorithm in Blender, and I'm here in Amsterdam for the next three months, and I was told uh, that maybe on Fridays you can come by the Blender Institute. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Friday, 6 o'clock, uh, mail me. Uh, Tom at Blender.org to make an appointment, because we want to have three or four cash max. But, uh, Friday, 6 o'clock, every week. Yeah? Okay. Uh, um, I have a question about versions. Will there be a 2781 version? Or? <laughs> no, that's just kidding. I saw, I saw in the roadmap for 28 somewhere uh, thrown that uh, there will be some kind of uh, support for OSD, Universal Scene Descriptor. Is there any specific plan for that or just uh, nice um, to have? We're looking at it and we're using it as uh, inspiration on how to work on things. Um, we're very interested in file format supporting it, but it does need support in Blender itself. And the biggest hurdle there would be, again, overrides. So again, we come back to Sergey. <laughs> I won't give him the microphone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be really well supported. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, I, I was in uh, Los Angeles at the Pixar uh, launch of USD, and even though it's really promising and uh, fantastic, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but that is still not finished. So they're still looking for help, uh, especially from Autodesk, what they try to set up to get the character files to work. Because currently, the character pipeline they have is designed to work only with Presto. 
Uh, Presto has an array of um, defining characters and deformations, which is insane. Nobody understands it, or uh, somebody tried to explain, I still don't understand how it works. But no program in the world is you doing this. So if you want to have Blender or Maya or Modo or any program to use USD, they first have to make a USD description for characters. And we are waiting for that. So it will take a year, I think. I have an additional question still about file formats. Is there any plan or, I don't know, any specific or wishful thinking plan to make part of the file format or even the entire file format human readable, like have a text uh, part of the file with some of the parameters, like for instance, like well, with Lux render or other renders have? Quick answer, no. It's still, it's still binary for, 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 for stuff like where you need to investigate it or something like this. We have a bundled blend file, uh, Python script, we, 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 which goes over all the data blocks and handles everything you need to, to worry about for you. Part of the reason for that is because our file format changes every so often. So if we, if we decide, okay, so this is format, and someone builds in production for, on top of that, and then we change something in, in the file format, then it's yet another thing to, to worry about of not breaking, which you don't want to, to, to commit into. And another issue is that all, all the human readable formats are really slow to, to read. And maybe Bastian also wanted to say something. Well, besides a performance issue too, because uh, loading textual, you know, when you are importing OBG files, it can take ages compared to a binary FBX files. So, it's, and but you, we do have a tool a script in the sources tools to get representations of Blender files as a JSON file. So, yeah, of course, of course. That, but uh, use the RNA API if you want to access uh, Blender files in uh, to get data from Blender files. There was, there was somebody else who was also doing random management and he had a similar question about it. And it was not so much about having a human readable Blend file, but it was about the pipeline for rendering. But all the properties for scenes, uh, the, the image sizes, uh, tiles, and all, all that kind of stuff. So you, it was not that you wanted to have a, a blend file in ASCII, but you wanted to have the render settings in a file which you can uh, handle. And probably that's more what you mean. Yeah. But the beautiful thing in Blender is, of course, the Python API. And the Python API gives you access to all the properties. And you can very simply define a very simple file format yourself to save all those things and manage it and have it all automated. Huh? I have a question just about detecting changes in Blender's data from the Python API. So I think there's a couple of ways that Python lets you know that something has changed. One's through is updated. Um, but is updated doesn't always tell you if things have changed. So we had to sort of hack ways around <laughs> finding things like um, the the stack of operators which has just run in context window manager, so we'd look at that. But things in there don't always tell you what the operands were. It was just like this thing run, and I was like, great, what did it run on? So uh, do you have any tips for basically drilling into what has just changed in the data space of Blender, other than using those two mechanisms? So, so is update it was a mechanism added for, for to support viewport rendering, and it's main it's mainly meant to to be in there, and. It, it might skip some case where something was technically changed, but because it doesn't it is needed, it does not affect on the viewport. It's just ignored because otherwise it 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 will get some extra updates which you don't have to. Uh, I think we can we, we we can do some more flexible notification type of thing in new dependency graph because there we we, we keep track of yeah. much more what's happening. I think that information would be really useful for what we're doing, so we can actually say right, we know exactly what's changed and where it is because we've put a lot of development effort into finding that as opposed to doing what we actually want to do, which is distributing data between Blender instances when things change. Yes, yeah, so, so so probably something will be changed here be, be, because it's also hitting uh, some design issues in the, in the new dependency graph. So we, we will need to do something smart here. I don't know how much time we still have left. Uh, I want to give at least the microphone to people who have not said a lot. Like, hey, so when is your uh, Manta flow coming in the next release? Uh, I think we should get it into like 
279. Yeah, wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Next year in February. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, when is uh, the viewport uh, Alpha coming? This summer? Well, the Alpha is going to have something in this summer, yeah, definitely. And what will the show? Fantastic stuff. Well, something PBR. PBR, PBR definitely. Yeah, well, huh? the, the, big the, the big animated. deliverable is PBR. Are we going to get open shop div? So Div is pretty much almost there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, right? We got a uh, real time fur. Well, we're going to have real time reflection, real time shadowing. That's ah, fantastic. Get him there, get him there, get him there. <laughs> oh, oops. So, uh, what is your project for next year? You're going to help with the logic system, maybe, in um, Blender? <laughs> maybe. Huh? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, almost a yes. And your project for 2017? Uh, pretty much everything cycles. No, everything. like uh, network rendering. Uh, finishing denoising. Denoising. Uh, yeah, I've been looking into gradient domain path tracing. Uh, no promises or anything, but it looks like it's possible and it might be kind of interesting. Uh, uh, I'm making yeah. cycles five times faster. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Yeah. Good. And what is your project for next year? Uh, working on class uh, at best case scenario, uh, fixing no, not hair, <laughs> fixing <laughs> collisions and uh, maybe bending. Yes. At best case scenario. Uh, uh, some deformation stuff. Yeah, but that, no. that's not that's another solver, no. not really totally cloth okay. cloth. Good. Are you going to do something in Blender next year? I might kick the tires of cycles as a change. Ah, okay. <laughs> and what is your goal? What are you, you going to present next conference? I'm going to fix the UI. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> um saving stuff in Blender files, like local stuff, like actions and partial blend files and ah, okay. pipeline management and small, stuff. Small, small, something bigger, something bigger. <laughs> Cloud simulation. Make, make it useful. Cloud simulation. <laughs> like cloud, cloud simulation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cloud simulation. Yeah. With the duplication and the overrides from him, yes. you can make a cloud yes. simulator. Yes. Cloud Good. Simulation. So what is your big target for next year? Do everything what nobody else dares to do. <laughs> <laughs> Finished the asset management. Ah, come on. Hey, are you? I'm finding a new O6 maintainer, maybe. And then <laughs> ah, coding. come on. on Would something. you want to do some cycles development? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I need to find a maintainer first. Yeah, I know. You shouldn't make so many kids, right? That's what I'll Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, he's making new maintainers. That's right. <laughs> new generation. So, uh, what are you working on next year? Uh, cycle split kernel. Ah, the spit kernel. You're making it super fast on AMD, what? So, Excellent. Yeah. Good. And you're a big target next year. Uh, more wireframes. Definitely more wireframes. More wireframes! Wire <laughs> and what is your big target? It is so secret, I would have to kill you. If ah! You. Well, 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 well. So the sample compositor is going to be released in. First version? I, 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 I can put it into master, but I think that uh, people will uh, no, no, no. <laughs> follow me but afterwards. By, but by uh, uh, summertime next year, we have more? Uh, uh, we are continuously uh, developing on it, but it is really on from, okay, how, how much time we okay. actually can spend on it. So we can't say we from, okay, in one you, year we have it finished. But you can already plan that, because, okay, we spend one day per week on this, and then? Yes, no? let's, uh, let's expand the, the conference to several months, then, okay. then we continuously can develop. Okay. <laughs> I'll ask you again next month. You will. Monique, you're working on with him on the sample system? Or yes. you have something else? Of course. Well, yeah, I know. I'm working on the sample system and uh, Blender for Kids thingy. Yeah. Excellent. We talk about that. Yes, I know. <laughs> and, and you, Joey, when is OpenHMD going to be ready for five? Uh, it already is. It's already in. It already, but but <laughs> it's him. It's him, right? Um, he decided to last minute change some buttons no, to no, different no, places, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> because I want to make it good, man. Ah. Like 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 shit and like. Okay, these are the Blender developers. Come on. Yeah. Thank you.